Okay, so now this is much better. <laughs> okay, hello and uh, welcome to this video. And I am so sorry that I haven't posted in a while. And that is because we have the flu season here in Sweden. And it has been crazy lot of uh, infections coming from the schools. Uh, so we, well, I haven't, but my family has been constantly sick and it's been crazy much to do. So now uh, we're hopefully going into some better weather. The sun is coming up more and more. And the darkness is disappearing, uh, which is nice uh, because I love sun and summer and I'm really looking forward for that season with landscape photography and hiking and tenting. But it's also a bit sad because the astrophotography season is uh, going towards an end for this season for me. But uh, I have been out a lot photographing. I've been out in, in the forests where there are scars, uh, where the sky is a bit darker, uh, but I have mostly been doing my astrophotography from my balcony, which isn't optimal because it's a white zone. I live in the central Stockholm and it's totally light polluted. Um, but there is, however, some tricks and some things that you can use as uh, an astrophotographer to circumvent a part of that and get decent results with that as well. So um, one of my first bigger astrophotography projects was uh, the Rosette Nebula. Uh, and that is because, well, mostly because I love the object. It's kind of circular and it's so beautiful, but also because it was just great just outside the balcony. I mean, the position of the Reset Nebula just fitted the, the location. I mean, I could, I could only photograph from the balcony and there was the Reset Nebula. So I just pointed my camera, my gear towards that and I just let it take exposures for hours and hours. So this video will be about that project and also to show you guys some of the investments that I have made and also that I am going to make or uh, the things are being shipped to me right now. But this is just some of the improvements I have made in astrophotography. Um, so this is probably something that I am going to talk about in another video. This is an autofocuser and like how I kind of sold the mechanical parts of that. Um, because I'm trying to stay with the, my gear that I already have, my photographic gear that I already have, not to go towards uh, specific astrophotography gear yet, but I will probably do it later, but we'll see. But today I wanted to talk about this image. So I am really proud of this image. This is the first image ever taken by me uh, of the Rosette Nebula and also the first time I created an uh, image that complicated because this was a lot of work. I had a lot of hours behind this photograph and that is because there are three different filters that I had to use and I had to use them on different occasions. Uh, depending on the moon and the location and also I failed a lot. I have improved quite a bit since this specific project but uh, this was a great learning experience for me so by sharing this hopefully if you're starting with uh, astrophotography or thinking about astrophotography this might help you a little bit as well. So this image is a color image and I have used my Canon 7D Mark II, which is a full spectrum modified camera that I'm using for my astrophotography, meaning that it is sensitive towards the infrared light, which uh, is needed for some of the specific uh, narrowband imaging that I'm doing. But there's a lot of uh, gas that emits infrared light and you need to have a sensor that is sensitive towards that light so you can capture it in a proper way. So. What you see here is called an SHO image, meaning uh, you have the red, green and blue channels, which is a color image. And then you take your sulfur data and you put it in red channel. You take your hydrogen data, which is 
in the green channel and then you have your oxygen data which goes into the blue channel and this is called the Hubble palette and with some tweaks in Photoshop you get some really nice colors just like NASA has released in their Hubble Space Telescope images. Uh, there is a video that I made about how I post process not this specific image but uh, Kui's uh, The Lazy Geeks data uh, in uh, I'm gonna link that video somewhere uh, probably down in the descriptions um, but anywho um, I had to kind of select when I did what. Sulfur and hydrogen is uh, in the near infrared section, so you can use that whenever you want. Like, you don't have to think about where you are, or you don't have to deal with the moon. Uh, the oxygen data, however, is another story because the oxygen data is going towards the teal, that, like green, blue area uh, or colors, uh, meaning that uh, light pollution and the uh, moon is a disturbing factor in this case. So you kind of have to be a little bit strategic where you are or when you're collecting your oxygen data. Um, I chose to collect my oxygen data from the inner city, which isn't optimal, but with the narrowband filters that I have, which blocks out everything except the, just the specific light that I want, um, I got some decent results anyway, and uh, I was limited with uh, well, the balcony and the views that I have from the balcony after like three hours of data collection, the Reset Nebula just went past the house and I couldn't see it anymore. I started photographing the wall, uh, so I kind of had to choose uh, when I had to do what. Whenever I saw that there were clear skies coming, I just put out my stuff on the balcony, polar line, and then started the exposures and, uh, well, did my, did my data collection. But okay, um, so yeah, I had uh, bad polar alignment, I had some star trails, I had high altitude clouds, I had snow crystals in the air, I had the moon, I had light pollution, I had battery failing me, I had gear failing me, memory cards failing me. Uh, one time the tripod started shaking, I had wind making it difficult. So all of these things were a major contributor to the amount of work that I had to put in for this specific image because I scrapped almost 60 to 70 percent of all the data collections that I did. So this was a lot of nights, a lot of hours behind this specific image but I am really, really pleased with the results. Uh, I know I can do better, but uh, the Reset Nebula is now out of my reach. It's a winter constellation and spring and light is coming, so I can't photograph that anymore. But uh, I'm really looking forward to the next season and uh, with some few updated gears, let's see what I can capture then. Probably buy some new gear. <laughs> So yeah, if you want to see the specific post process uh, on how I post process this image, do check out the video linked in the description below. And as usual, uh, hook me up with a comment. Do tell me if you like or don't like this.